Hi, my name is Dylan Baker and this is part of a tutorial series for the Incident Command Assistant software. In this tutorial, we're going to just go over the networking features that allow you to have multiple devices on the same local area network collaborate together, complete paperwork, uh, communications logging, team assignment generation, and all the other things the app can do. I should note and stress, this is for a local area network only. It is not designed to work over the internet. Uh, although some groups have experimented with remote desktop type solutions or virtual network solutions, uh, go ahead, but the supported, the supported approach is just over a local area network. It doesn't require the internet though, so all those tasks that happen well outside of cell phone range should be just fine. So in order to set multiple workstations up on the same network to communicate and collaborate together, you first need to identify one workstation as the primary or host computer. On that computer you're going to start the initial task and probably be the one to main, do the primary save as well. On that computer, you're going to go up to here to network at the top of the screen, click on network settings. That opens this window up here and you're going to identify this one computer as the server. It's going to tell you what the IP address of that computer is on the local area network as well as a port number, which is usually going to be 42999. Just go ahead and hit save. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen there, it also says the current IP address and port of the server that's acting as the server. Next, we're going to move over to one of the other computers on the local area network and just see what that looks like from that perspective. Okay, so here we're on one of the other computers on the local area network and we're going to connect to that first one. So we're going to go to network, network settings, and in this case we're going to choose this computer will be connected to another computer. You'll enter the IP address here that was given to you on the host computer and then the port number as well, which again should be 42999. Go ahead and hit save and it will attempt to initiate the contact. When it does, you'll get a message like this. It tells you it was successful in con connecting to the other computer. Would you like to download the current task from the server? This will replace anything you've got going on on the screen here. Anything here will be lost when you do this. So hit yes and then it's going to send a request to that primary host computer asking for the task data. This is just a little security feature to make sure no one just connects to your network and starts downloading the task data. It's going to be identified by the computer name on the other device and they're going to have to give permission to download the task. So that's what it's going to look like on the other computer there. Current start task has been requested, the name of the computer. Would you like to send the data? I'm going to say yes. And back on the, the other client computer, it's going to say, yep, task data is loaded, and there it is. So you've got the task, you've got the assignments, you've got members signed in, everything else. And as changes are made on one computer in the network, they should propagate to all of the other computers so that one person can be logging comms, another making assignments, and another one filling out the incident action plan. So we're just back on the primary computer now. The last thing I want to mention is if you do have challenges with the network, you want to make sure that there are exceptions in your firewall for this application. Uh, it should come up and prompt you when you first go to change the network settings, asking you to make an exception in Windows Firewall. Uh, if it does, please say yes. Uh, if it doesn't, you may need to go in and, and do that. But you shouldn't have to do it every time. It should be just the first time you're setting it up. If you encounter other problems with the network, my suggestion would be to make sure you've saved the file on the host computer. Just close the program down on all the computers and start start it up again. That's usually enough to get it to get it working again, uh, assuming your network is functioning properly. All right, thanks for joining me in that short tutorial. There are more tutorials on how to use the software located up there and in the link down below. Uh, below in the description, you'll also find a link to download the software itself and to reach out if you have any more questions. Good luck on your tasks.